On the first sight, the Ableton Live synthesizers seem to be quite clear. You get this classic analog synth, which is called analog, and you also have some classic FM synth, which is operator. It also actually gives you some additive options. And also you have this super modern synth called wavetable, plus also, of course, the sampler. So you have all kinds of options you can wish for when you're creating sounds. Nevertheless, there's one effect that is way more powerful than all of those individual synthesizers on their own, which is called instrument rack, because here you can basically set up your own patches that contain, for example, the sound made with analog, combined with another layer made in wavetable, and this way you can create super interesting multi-layered sounds yourself. It also allows you to select the most important parameters that you'd like to modulate during a performance or recording and to map them to some macros. In this way, even if you create some super complex patch, you can just make the whole instrument rack smaller and just see those eight macros, for example, and actually simplify your sound no matter how complex it is. So if you're interested in using up the full potential of Ableton Live synthesizers, this video should be for you. Before we start, let me quickly say hi. So my name is Janis and on my channel you can find many videos about making and producing music and basically having more fun doing it. Also particularly videos about making sounds with synthesizers in Ableton Live. So in case you enjoy this video, you're already warmly invited to check out some more videos you can find on my channel. So the instrument rack you can find on the left side menu when you click on instruments and then just instrument rack and you can drag it onto your channel. But by itself it doesn't play any sound because we still have to load some presets inside the instrument rack. And I prepared two sounds, like one bass sound that I'm just going to load inside this menu here. It's called a Moog type bass. You can on the left side always make it smaller so you just see the list for example. And then I have something called noisy lead that I want to bring in as well. So we have a mixture of some bass sound, but also some kind of noisy lead sound. And so just the bass sound sounds like this. And the lead sound, oh, you heard a bit already. It's this, it also has some bass, but actually together it's some super fat, fun patch. Let me also quickly tell you about the navigation inside the instrument rack. So the lowest symbol here just gives you the list of your sounds. If you also close this one, it's just going to get as small as it can. And here you basically have the list, you can mix the sounds. Then here you can open the view of your individual instruments. And that's actually this great thing that you can just close it so your sound looks way more simplified. And those two things are for macros, which I'll speak about in a second. And on top of your instrument list, you have some additional options for refining the reaction to your sound that you play on your keyboard, which is actually super fun because you can do some keyboard splitting, for example, let's say here's the C and we want to have all notes that are lower than the C by just the bass and everything that's above the C by just the lead sound. So now you can see that I can play the bass sound with my left hand and the lead sound with my right hand. And it's super fun to play like this with both hands at the same time. And by the way, those are some sounds that I'm currently working on because I'm going to release my first ever Ableton Live synth sound pack. And I think it should be ready in the beginning of 2023. So either you watch this video and it's already out, you'll find the link down below in the description, or if it's not out already, you can just follow me here or also on Instagram, which link you will also find in the description and then don't miss out once I release it. And let's check velocity. So here you can also tell the sound that, for example, if you play soft, you don't have the bass. So if I now play, we only have the lead, but if I play with the higher velocity, we hear the bass. And then there's a thing called chain selector, which is a little tricky to understand, but once you understand, it's actually super cool, but I'm going to speak about it in a second. But first I want to speak about the macros because they are so helpful. And I just changed to only the Moog bass because it's also some instrument rack. It's basically good to know that you can insert instrument racks into another instrument rack. So there are absolutely no limits on how far you can go here. And you see, I have two instances of analog because I wanted to have some three oscillator Moog type sound and analog only has two oscillators. I mean, it has a sub oscillator, but it's just a sine wave. So I just added another one. So it's more fat and it's a very simple example, but even for this, it's already so useful that this instrument rack is around. And in order to map those macros, you just have to open one of your instruments and basically right click on whatever you have. So if you want to change the detune, for example, you can just right click and because right now the macro 4 is still open, 
we could just map it to macro 4 and now you see once we move this the detune changes and if you go to the map button you can also here have some more dedicated control over how far you want to go so for example if you don't want the filter to go all the way down to 30 hertz you can just change it and say the lowest it can go to is like 200 for example. And what's even more useful about those macros is that you're not limited to mapping only one thing to them. So theoretically you can make them some multi-functional knobs that could control multiple things at the same time. But also because you know if you use like two analogs here you have two independent filters. You don't have a global filter, which is sometimes a little annoying, but you can just map both filter frequencies, like the one from the first and the one from the second, to knob number one. And you see, when I move this, like both on this lower analog and on the upper analog, it moves. And this way you can control the filter for multiple instances with just one knob. And if you have some MIDI controller, chances are that there's already like some pre-mapping for device control, which says like if you have a device, it controls the first eight parameters. And this can be really messy if it's just a plugin because you never really know what it is. But if you have this kind of view here, you can see that for example, on my launch pad or launch key, I also have a pad, but this is the launch key. I can just use those knobs because it has some mode for the device control. And now I can just control those here. And out of a sudden you have some almost analog synthesizer type experience. I mean, of course, not exactly, but this is just so much more fun in terms of creating sounds, playing sounds, and just having those mappings to make it more easy for you. By the way, if you feel like you also need some all around guide for synthesis covering the basics and just teaching you like the most important words and terms, there's a class I made that you can currently find on Skillshare and the link is down below in the description. So you're warmly invited to check that out and this link gives you a free trial for one month as well. And inside your instrument rack you can also create different presets and it's this icon that you find under the macro icon and it's called macro variations and if you create a new one let's say we make a dark sound we call it dark and bring the filter all the way down to the minimum then we click this icon on the left side so it saves it we create a new one and call it bright it's like the simplest example i can make but just you'll get the point easily so we save it again and so now we can just change between the dark preset and the bright preset and you can create as many as you want and i also want to show you the change selector because this was a mystery to me until just some weeks ago when I finally figured out how it works. And it has some cool options that were not obvious to me in the beginning. So if you click on chain, you get to the chain selector menu. And then it's good to know that this blue thing here is your chain selector. So you can move it around. You can also map it to one macro. So for example here, let's just map the chain selector to macro number one. You also can do it this way by map and clicking on it and then to on this macro. And now we can basically move the chain selector with our macro. And now it depends on what you do here because right now only at number zero are both sounds are selected. So you could also do it in a way that your bass sound is here. And so in the beginning, you only have the bass sound and then if you move your chain selector further at some point you only have your lead sound. This can be quite handy if you're playing live and you don't want to make a new instrument rack for any sound. So you just have your first song maybe here and then your second song here. And also with those controls here for the scenes you can automate stuff so maybe at the next scene it jumps to the next sound. So especially for live performance it's a quite cool tool. But what's even more interesting to me is that you can use it to mix between two different sounds. So in this case let's make a duplicate of the noisy lead. So we have it twice and then we just move this bar to the whole length. And you see that on top of this bar and actually before let's also do it for the bass. On top of this bar you have a thinner line in this kind of bright blue or almost white. And if you manage to hit it here you can also make this kind of thing which gives it kind of a different strength on all those parts. So when it's at 127 it's fully gone and if it's at zero it's fully present. And you can do it with the other sound but just the other way around. And with your other sound change something that the other sound doesn't have. So maybe your second sound is going to be super detuned. It's a very banal example again but just for the sake of it. And if you now move the chain selector let's actually go all the way to the beginning. You see that we move from the kind of normal sound to some more detuned sound. 
and I mean there are always several ways of doing this. You can also map this inside the synth of course, but also if you created two sounds that you like both and you can't really decide on which one to use, you can basically load them into the instrument rack this way and just find a sweet spot where you have something of both of them or just use it for previewing different sounds. If you're interested in more content about making sound with the synthesizers in Ableton Live, I'm going to link you a playlist here and also just another video here where it's more about rhythm and some rhythmic tricks that make your music more exciting. Apart from that, I wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and really hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye!